You won't believe the level of detail you can achieve with the photography techniques I'm about to share. Here's the full image. Now take a closer look at this 100% crop. In this video, I'll show you how to shoot and edit epic wildlife panoramas over 150 megapixels, unlocking an entirely new world of possibilities. Later in this video, I'll show you exactly how I edit this image. But first, let's talk about how to shoot it and why this technique is so powerful. Using a panoramic approach not only delivers crazy levels of detail, but it also helps overcome common lens limitations. If your lens isn't wide enough to capture the entire scene, shooting a series of frames allows allows you to stitch together a wider view. But here's the real magic. Even if your lens can capture the full scene, zooming in and creating a multi-frame panorama will give you far more resolution and much more detail than a single shot ever could. Take a look at these two examples. On the left, you've got a single shot. On the right, a stitched panorama using the exact technique I'm showing in this video. Now let's zoom in to 100% on both. The difference in detail is unreal. The panorama absolutely blows the single shot away. So how do you do it? Creating a panorama is simply about capturing a sequence of overlapping images and stitching them together later in post. The shooting process is pretty straightforward, but there's one big limitation I'll cover in just a moment. Here's what matters when shooting. Keep your exposure consistent across all frames. I always shoot in full manual to lock in my settings. Lock your focus before you start. In this case, I focused on the leopard. You don't want the focus shifting as you pan. With exposure and focus locked, shoot your sequence fast. The quicker you shoot, the less chance something in the scene will change. I usually overlap each frame by about a third. This gives the stitching software plenty of information to work with. In this example, I used eight vertical frames to complete the final panorama. Now about that limitation, if your subject is moving, this technique won't work. Because each frame is taken at a slightly different moment, a moving subject will appear in different positions across the sequence and that makes stitching nearly impossible. So this method is best reserved for static subjects, like this leopard holding its position long enough for a clean sequence. The edit you're about to see is just the basics. If you want to transform your editing skills and create powerful images, my full editing course will show you how. There's a link in the description if you want to check it out. Now, let's jump into how to stitch all the frames into one seamless panorama and edit it into this final high impact version. Start by importing your sequence of files into Lightroom. Select the images you want to merge, right click on one of them and choose photo merge and then panorama. If you shot a vertical series, but Lightroom shows them as horizontal, you might get an error. Just rotate the frames to their correct orientation and try again. Lightroom uses the raw file data for merging, completely ignoring any edits you've applied. That's a good thing. It means your final panoramic file will be a raw DNG, giving you full editing flexibility. For projection type, you can choose between spherical, cylindrical, or perspective. I typically use spherical. Boundary warp stretches the image to fill in blank edges. Fill edges uses AI to fill in those gaps. Auto crop trims off empty borders. Auto settings applies automatic edits to the final panel. Create stack keeps all the source images and the final panel grouped together in Lightroom. I usually uncheck everything except create stack. Once you're happy with the preview, hit merge. Lightroom will generate a brand new DNG file for you to edit. Look at the resolution of this final panorama. That's massive, and we can print this file very big. If you want to denoise the new pano, you can do it right inside Lightroom on the new DNG file. But if you're using something like DxO Pure Raw, make sure to denoise the original raw files first and then merge those cleanup DNGs into your final panorama. Now let's edit this file, creating this type of high key effect. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure my profile is set to Adobe Standard. I'm going to turn off all of the sharpening on this image and make sure my lens corrections is turned on for remove chromatic aberration. The first thing I'm going to do is crop the image. I want to get rid of these edges that have no detail. So I'm just going to drag this crop like that. I want to keep the left-hand side of this tree. And I'm going to eliminate a lot of the space on the right-hand side. I feel like it's a lot of space that is unnecessarily used. So I'm going to crop the image 
perhaps to something like that. I don't like these little bits of sticks sticking out from the bottom here, so I'm going to remove those just by using the remove tool. Just going to paint these away. And then I think I might just get rid of this stick as well. I feel like it's just floating there and serves no purpose. So I just want to get rid of that too. Okay, that's looking a lot better. So for this edit, I'm simply going to convert it to black and white. And because we've got a very bright background, I'm going to go for a very high key effect with this. So I'm just simply going to increase my exposure and then I'm going to drop the blacks quite a bit. I'm going to bring in a lot of contrast between the very bright areas of this image and the very dark areas. So I just wanna make sure I don't clip any blacks and I'm just going to then increase the whites until I start clipping out some of the white detail there. Then I'm going to add some clarity. I'm going to add in some nice mid-tone contrast. I might use the shadow slider just to increase a little bit of exposure inside these very dark areas in the tree. And maybe just roll back a little bit of those highlights or something like that. Just increase that black slider a bit there. I'm not going to add a vignette to this image. I like the very high contrast and very consistent brightness in the white parts of this image. Let's just maybe tweak this exposure down a little bit. Maybe add in a little bit less contrast on the shadows. And then I'm going to throw on a preset here, part of my Lightroom Tools preset pack, which is available for free. I'm going to use the black fade effect that is just going to soften out the blacks in this image. Just going to ride this amount up and down. And you can see it really gives a nice, almost vintage feeling to this image. I'm going to zoom in here, going to go to my detail panel, I'm going to add some sharpening. Radius at 0 0.5, detail probably at about 20. Masking, I will increase that until the background is not being sharpened. Maybe about 30 or so for that effect there. If you're working with a high ISO image, using the right workflow makes all the difference. In this video, I'll walk you through my go-to method for getting the best results with noisy files. 